Welcome to France 2022, the choice, our daily show covering the presidential race and only six days to go before the decisive round two. Emmanuel Macron vows to be greener than ever if he is re-elected, while Marine Le Pen sees old financial troubles resurface. Here is the recap of the weekend and of this Monday with Shirley Sitbaum. It's the week Marine Le Pen has been preparing for. Not just the runoff, but the debate before the runoff. Five years ago, she failed so miserably, her voters felt humiliated. <laughs> Le Pen moves head on, but she's got a dark cloud over her head. The European Union Anti-Fraud Agency is accusing her of embezzling public funds when she was MEP. For Emmanuel Macron, it's time to make closing arguments and convince undecided voters. Turning into Mr. Environment in Chief is the strategy. La politique que je mènerai dans les cinq ans à venir sera donc écologique ou ne sera pas. Mon prochain Premier ministre sera directement chargé de la planification écologique. Will taking Jean-Luc Mélenchon's words be enough to win over his voters? A poll carried out last week shows roughly a third of Mélenchon's backers plan to vote for Macron. The other two-thirds plan to vote for none of the two candidates. They were not allowed to choose Le Pen. The far-right candidate has made several U-turns in the race. The latest is an adjustment on the Islamic veil, which initially she wanted to ban. une politique volontariste, voilà, qui mettra fin au visé de l'islamisme radical sur notre sol, qui commencera par l'interdire dans les services publics et qui, par voie de conséquence, limitera dans la rue sa, sa visibilité. A change of heart, which Team Macron says is worrying. Je m'inquiète surtout des revirements, des incohérences, des inconséquences de Marine Le Pen sur des sujets qu'elle instrumentalise ou sur lesquels elle ne sait pas vraiment quelle est sa position. The lack of apartments, that is these activists' battle. They protested outside the candidates' headquarters, hoping their noise would finally wake them up. That is all from the campaign trail. Meet again tomorrow, same time, same place. Okay, so a busy weekend there for the candidates. And Mark, what are the pollsters saying about their chances? Well, our partner, uh, the Ipsos Topra Asteria, uh, tells us that uh, Macron has a 12-point lead now over Marine Le Pen. 56% versus 44%. It's the largest uh, lead since the first round when it was 52-48. Uh, it's not as big as it was in 2017 when Macron won 66% versus 34% for Marine Le Pen. Okay, thanks for that. Well, we're joined here in the studio by uh, Maya Anais yet again. Uh, very nice to see you, Maya. Um, now, you've seen this in, in the recap we just heard there. Marine Le Pen embroiled in a fraud inquiry. And all of this just a matter of days before Sunday's runoff vote. Yes, the uh, anti-fraud, uh, the European Anti-Fraud Office, that's its name, alleges that the national rally candidate and several of her party members misused about 620 thousand euros in funds while serving in European Parliament. Uh, so, uh, Maya, tell us a bit more about those very serious accusations. Well, it's a damning 116-page report pointing the finger at Marine Le Pen and three other party members, her father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, her ex-partner, Louis Alliot, and another National Front heavyweight, Bruno Golnisch. All four deny any wrongdoing. Now, none of these people are accused of personally profiting, but of claiming EU funds to pay for their party staff and even expenses during their time as MEPs. Every lawmaker, every political group in the European Parliament can claim expenses for political activities, but only if they are carried out in the exercise of a parliamentary work. The anti-fraud agency says that a part of those funds, EU public funds, have been used by Marine Le Pen and others for national 
political purposes, personal expenses, and for services that would benefit companies that would be close to her party and to the far-right parliamentary group, Europe of Nations and Freedom, and now the EU Parliament, is seeking a full reimbursement of the allegedly misused funds. OK, so Maya, what is Marine Le Pen personally accused of here? Well, she's accused of having personally diverted almost one 137,000 euros worth of public money of EU funds when she was an MEP between 2004 and 2017. Our colleagues from Mediapart have reported about a series of incidents. Among them, in 2010, for example, she made a claim for the refunding of almost 5,000 euros in travel fees for 13 party leaders. Officially, those people were taking part in a meeting called the Regions and Europe in face of a financial crisis. But according to one participant, the gathering had nothing to do with European matters and was used to discuss the party's presidency. The European Anti-Fraud Agency says the allegations are susceptible to lead to criminal proceedings and the Paris Public Prosecutor's Office today is looking into the claims but it's worth noting that Marine Le Pen has not yet has not yet been summoned by any French judicial authority yet. With days to go before the runoff, the candidate's team has denounced this timing chosen by EU authorities for such a disclosure. So take a listen to her communication director counterattacking. It has come out just days before the second round. I think you can see that this is not very subtle. What I'd like to know is where we're at with the McKinsey scandal. The financial prosecutor's office was real fast with Francois Fillon. But are they taking a nap for this one? And Maya, of course, this is not the first time Marine Le Pen finds herself in hot water for alleged misuse of European money. Yes, exactly. This particular probe has been open since 2016. But it's worth remembering that Marine Le Pen, since June 2017, has also been under investigation on allegations of breach of trust and misuse of public funds. She's accused of having given party members fake jobs as assistants at the European Parliament when they were, in reality, performing party activities in France. In 2018, European judges ruled that Marine Le Pen had to reimburse close to 350,000 euros worth of EU funds, paid as salaries to, for example, we can see him on the picture, her long-time serving bodyguard and her France-based chief of staff when they were on parliamentary assistant contracts. Marine Le Pen back then refused to repay that amount denying any wrongdoing once again. As a result, European authorities began withholding almost half her salary, as well as freezing her hour allowances and expenses. The EU Parliament has estimated the cost of alleged abuse by the national rally to 7 million euros between 2009 and 2017. Okay, well, thanks for that. I have a funny feeling, Mark, that this, uh, this issue is going to come up in the debate on Wednesday? Well, uh, this is probably uh, going to be uh, debated and probably uh, denied uh, once again by uh, Marine uh, Le Pen. Uh, it's the second time uh, both Emmanuel Macron and Marine Le Pen uh, will uh, face off their uh, first head-to-head. -head was a clear victory for Emmanuel Macron and, according to Marine Le Pen's own words, her worst political moment uh, ever. So obviously both are uh, prepping in very uh, different ways. Let's take a look at how uh, they are indeed uh, reading uh, all their material and preparing attacks on each other with Shannon McCausland and our colleagues from France too. Wednesday, a pivotal day for France's presidential campaign. Emmanuel Macron and Marine Le Pen will go head to head once again on live television. But what are their strategies for the upcoming debate? One thing's for sure, they'll not want a repeat of 2017. They are there. They're in the countryside, in the towns. It was a debate filled with insults that left Macron as the clear winner against the far-right candidate. Stop saying ridiculous things. But Wednesday's face-off will be a bigger challenge for the incumbent president. People will compare the debate to 2017. Everyone will say she has progressed, so it will be positive for her. Le Pen will prepare with mock debates with an expert who fits Macron's political profile. The French president has been taking notes of Le Pen's moves to guard his place in the Elysee. She is spending a lot of time preparing. I'm still under threat in this debate. It's really serious. 
Neither candidate wants this to be an aggressive debate, but Le Pen is not ruling out confronting Macron. If it's an occasion where we can have a hard debate and where his track record can be addressed, then yes, it will be a key moment of the campaign. The president's advisers anticipate an attack. We're going to get a bruising. We have to unmask her and unravel her programme. The two candidates are prepared for this debate, where everything is at stake. It's a clash set to be watched by millions nationwide ahead of the April 24th runoff election. And France 24 will carry that debate live. It starts at 9 p.m. on Wednesday, Paris time, and we'll have, before that, a special campaign show starting at 8.40 p.m. Paris time. OK, so lots happening this week. Well, in the uh, lead up to the presidential vote, we're going to take the pulse of the country. Our journalists uh, Julie Dungelhoff and Florence Vimino have been crisscrossing France, meeting voters, trying to understand their daily lives, their concerns, and as you'll see, their ideas for the future of the country. Yes, and today, Tom, we're heading to the Paris suburb of Bagnolet, where uh, the Lanou, as it's known, neighborhood is cut off from the center of town by a motorway. Locals have decided to make the enclave into a bustling hub. A lot of it thanks to one man, the energy of one man, community organizer Alassane Diallo. I was born in Senegal. I came to France when I was about two or three. I've been in La Noue since 1984. It's what they call a priority neighborhood. It's here where I found all the bricks that allowed me to lay foundations and build myself as a human being. So I owe this neighborhood a lot, and today I want to give back as much as I can in a reciprocal way. I run the cultural center these days. I used to come here as a kid and a teenager. What drives me, and I think I owe it to my education, is the desire to do my part to try and reduce inequalities. This class teaches people to make all the delicious things that they might see in a bakery but can't afford. They learn to make it themselves at home. Helping each other out really makes a difference. Intergenerational communication really makes a difference, too. This neighborhood is nice to live in, despite other problems. I'm not saying everything is rosy here. The delinquency rate is very low. The baccalaureate success rate is pretty high compared to other neighborhoods around here. I'm going to see Vincent, the artist. <laughs> if Lanou had a mayor, it would be Alassane. Seeing Alassane's energy inspired me to give more and invest myself socially with the kids in the neighborhood or at the local community center. I take pleasure from helping others. It's all about making connections. If I were president, I'd make sure the expertise of each individual is recognized. Today, our society requires too many diplomas, and that means you miss out on people's skills, and that's too bad. I'd ensure that society is more inclusive and that each person's diversity is taken into consideration. Well, that report by our team, Julie Dungelhoff, Florence Vimino and George Yazbek. Now, let's finish on a lighter note, shall we, Mark? Yes, a much lighter note, I should say. Uh, a picture of Emmanuel Macron was taken this weekend on the sidelines of a rally in Marseille and uh, really has been a hit on social network. You can see him relaxing on the couch, laughing, and his shirt is on bottom and his chest is, well, hairy. Let's put it this way, uh, it is not a stolen picture. It was taken by his official photographer, Soizig de la Moissonnière. Uh, it obviously prompted a, a flurry, sorry, of memes, jokes, parodies and everything. Uh, so this is our lighter note for this Monday, Tom. OK, well, there we are. Thank you very much indeed, Mark Perriman. Uh, and thank you as well to you, uh, Maya Anissa, yet again. Thank you.
We'll be back tomorrow, as Mark said, at 8.15 p.m. Meanwhile, do stay tuned to France 24.